Hello everybody, this is Frankie Day for Frankie Day Models. Okay, uh, for this nice uh, chili, a little bit of the chili of a, of a Wednesday, I have for you a live action video. Okay guys, this ain't came unprecedented. I just uh, rooting around out there in my stash and I ran across an old kit I had for a long, long time. I think I bought it back in the 1970s, 73, 74. It's a hot, it's a, this is not often model. I have not seen it on, on YouTube. I have not seen a built model of this or a build. It's probably out there. I really haven't researched it out, but, but uh, thus far, I just haven't seen any out there. This is a 170 second scale B, a B47 Stratojet. This is probably one of the most beautiful airplanes that they ever had back in the day. The reason uh, why it was very short-lived, I don't know. But this actually was an experimental aircraft more than anything. The B-47 and B-52, they came out by the same time. And uh, so the Boeing, Air, Edward, Edward Boeing, he more or less contracted... Uh, a bunch of designers to build a B-52 on steroids. This is it right here. Had tandem landing gear with outriggers, landing wheels in the inside nacelles, the outrigger landing gear. A very unique airplane. It's going to be painted in the aluminum and white, just like it is on the box. Uh, I've been working on it last night. I've kind of cheated a little bit. But I will continue on to the assembly with this other camera got going here. That's the Bombay. And that's all your landing gear wells right there. There's a trick put that in. That was a boxed assembly right there. Inside here, I've got my bombs in there. I will install them last and paint them last and have the Bombay doors. This thing here has no fit issues though. It, it it really goes together very well without no gaps or anything. That fusage, I buffed up that fusage. This ain't gonna be no filler. There's no filler on there. You don't need it. As it's, 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 I said, it was a solid piece of uh, solid fuselage. And uh, so and we're gonna continue live action. I'm gonna do some I'm gonna do some buffing out right in here. I'll buff this out, do a little buffing on here some more. Then we're gonna add the stabilizers. I've already got them done already, sub assembly wise. They've all been buffed out. The fit is excellent. The fit is excellent. So far, the fit of this kit is excellent. It's Hasagawa. Hasagawa, they did a fine job in engineering and tooling their kits. Their earlier efforts back in the uh, late 60s, around 68, 69, and eventually when they got released uh, to America in 1970 or 71, some of the old kits that they made were kind of crude, rude, crude, and polite. And uh, you talk about Rosie the River and, and Airfix and all the Reveal kits. You have to take a buffing board or a file board and sand down those ribs to low relief so they don't stick out too much. I did a build of the uh, Emily Flying Boat. And I got a hangout over here, right above it, just above it, right here. I can think, I'm touching it right now. And that was a rough as a cop kit. That was 1970. That was my second rodeo of that. And uh, it, it, it goes together very well. It's an excellent kit. This rib is a little crude a little bit, though, but it, uh, it's a good kit. You know, it's, it's rough. It's early ejection molding that they used in the day, but they got better back in 1972. They really improved by, well, heck, before that, 1971. I say back in the 1970s, Hasegawa were putting out some darn decent-looking models. The earlier efforts were rough as a cob because, heck, you know, that's probably one of the earlier efforts that they made probably back in the 60s and 50s they had. 
but uh, it's still a good kit today. Now the release from that one's even better. Cost a little more than the other one does, but the other one's just as much as the new ones are. Okay, as I said, right now, get yourself your favorite beverage, your favorite snack. Get yourself a pipe, cigar, cigarette, anything to keep you going. And uh, join me for about a good hour. We're going to go ahead and get those B-47 Stratajet going here. And uh, so it'll be buffing and assembling and sub-assembling work going on. This too is going to be a fast build. I like the way it's going together. Okay. Enough chatter. Let's swing around and change cameras out. And we'll catch you on the build. Okay, guys. It's showtime. Okay, here I am, fellas. Here's a fuselage. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do some more buffing in here. This kit's probably about 50 years old. I will, yeah, probably around, I'd say probably around 45, 46 years old. It's been around for a long time. It's not a very popular kit that has never been often modeled. The last time I built a B-47 was back in the nifty 1950s. And uh, those are the old Ravel ones. I think Lindbergh made one too. Real odd box, uh, box scale. It was very small, I remember. But that Ravel one wasn't too, wasn't too shabby. That's really smooth. That buff works better than sanding. I got these little, little more sanding right there. That you sand, always buff it out, fellas. The other side is going to be white. It's really not that critical. But the, what comes down to the uh, filling in the joints, that's really smooth. My God, that's smooth. Well, I took that no time. Come over here, we'll buff out this little joint over here. This is called spit and polish, boys. Spit and polish. Thus far, this few shots don't need no filler. None at all. I gotta get that sky train too, I gotta get that thing buffed out real well and get ready to prepare for painting.
the aluminum painted jobs, you gotta really uh, do some buffing. You gotta repair that surface real good. Once you get the surface all buffed out with that with your buffing file, like I like I did right here, the file board. Then when you apply your uh, when you apply your paint on this thing, as always, gloss it up, give it a good coat of gloss and the whole fuselage. Then you can airbrush the silver on there, you know, it gives you a really good finish. But the stuff on this mixture I made using acetone and uh, an aluminum metal, metallic aluminum paint I got from the hardware uh, hardware store, Ace Hardware. It uh, it does a job. Hey, a little more buffing right there. Perfect. Smooth as a baby's bump. That light right there. That light right there shows you if you got any fill or any joints you got to fill in. The light really shows a lot of stuff. Every time you move something in the light, it changes the, the reflection of it. And you'll see stuff like you haven't seen before. And you wonder, how in the hell did I miss that? You gotta use light. Light is a very important subject to use when it comes to building these things. You let that light hit it, but that light right there really takes it out. That's a nice finish right there. See right here. Give that another buffing, just make certain. Then we'll go up there and work on the fuselage bottom up forward and get that smooth as the baby's run up, and I'll be a happy baby. And that's smooth. You put some white paint on that, you can see nothing. What comes to the, uh, the pilot's compartment, there's a lot to desire. And blah, that ain't gonna be seen at all, no matter how much detail you put in that stuff in there. Let me show you guys something here. There's your cockpit. So what you see is what you get. They gave you two joysticks, two seats, and a floor. It's all the painted interior green inside there. I don't know if they give you an anti-glare panel. No, I mean an instrument panel decal. Let me check the decal since I'm talking about that. A good time. Now is a good time to... Uh, darn, Frank. Watch out for those stabilizers. Oh, there's a cockpit there. Let's see if I've got any of the instrument panels they printed on this thing. Why right here I'll show you the sheet. Yeah. Right there, fellas. Not bad decal. They're pretty good sheet. It's, their decal's pretty good pretty good order. Made in J Pan. Yeah. This is gonna be nice when I get it done. Nope, no instrument panel. 
this is what you see is what you get. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that black in there anyway. And I'll take a toothpick or something and dab, dabble some white white specks on there to simulate instrument dials. It's not a thing you too. Uh, I don't know. I don't think this kit gives you any uh, instrument panels there. Let me check. Let me check here. I'm we'll checking the instructions here to see if there is, is an instrument panel. Nope. It's negative. None at all. Nope. Not very many parts this kit too, guys. Not very many parts. I imagine they designed this thing to keep it as simple as they could. So that's what I got to do. I got to paint the face of those uh, where the instrument panel goes. I have to paint it black and just go ahead and do the best I can to, to make some um, instrument dials. You guys want to see a good movie about this thing, the good footage and everything. There's one called Strategic Air Command with Jimmy, James Stewart, the old Hollywood actor. And the X-World War II B-24 pilot. And uh, it has him flying this thing. But the B-47 was very short-lived. I think at the time when it was designed, it was ahead of its time. And there's no need for it. They already had a strategic bomber. That's the mighty, mighty uh, B-52. I think 1952 that thing came out, did it? 51, 52, B-52 came out. But the B-47's travel jet was, I think, it was the most prettiest bomber that they ever made. Why it was short lived, I don't know. Also, the very, very light, subtle more than anything, panel lines in this thing. There's panels in there, so you can hear it. And see it too, but the top here, the fuselage there isn't any because it wasn't any in the beginning. But there is, there is uh, some panels on it, but they're very subtle. I never built one of these before, except that Ravel one I was telling you about earlier in the video that 1955 release. good and smooth. We put that aluminum on there, it's gonna look nice. It'll be so pretty you can shave up the fuselage. I got the SP2C Almost done. I airbrushed some satin lacquer on it. I want it to dry. I'm going to put the decals on it to be all finished. Today it's just a nasty day today. It rained. Cold and chilly. It feels like fall again. And we're nearing spring. That's nice. Good. Okay. Off a little bit, of, a little more to the file board.
a little seam right there. But once I, oh yeah. Happy Sam, I'm sure the spiders buff out them scratches. Aluminum and silver paints like that until it finishes, they're very prone to picking up scratches or anything that's not prepared. You got a speck of dust on your fuselage, it'll pick it up. That's nice. That aluminum right there, get rid of that. This thing is nice. It's all smooth. It's all smooth. You can't even see where how it how the few charges put together. It's a shame they didn't incorporate very much detail, but you gotta realize the technology back in the 1970s was nothing compared to what we got today. But spare parts box, skill, patience. You can virtually build yourself a whole new cockpit put in there. But like I said, they give you a cockpit for two yokes and two seats. That's also they give you uh, two crew members too. Yes. So I'll paint them in blue suits and white helmets on and stick them in there. That'll kind of fill the bill a little bit. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to concentrate on this. This hasn't been buffed out yet, but it will be now. Might be sand. That glue seam out. The seams are not really that bad in this kit. I mean, they, they really don't leave no seams at all. I mean, no gaps, overlapping gaps. I think I've, I've got two of these in my stash. David Ostrada, he sent me one of these, now I remember. I think that's my stash, my big stash pile in my, in my new, uh, in my old uh, warehouse, my main stash warehouse. Where I used to live at. I gotta drive almost 10 12 miles into town to go to my big storage. I like it being up here. But it is what it is, fellas. It is what it is. Man, that buffer does a good job. The, the, the grits in this file board, this buffer board, is so it's so fine, but you gotta add a little spit to it or, or water to it. A little moisture. And it really goes, it sands it out and buffs it too. I have not put one smidgen of um, filler. This thing is starting to get smooth now. Remember how rough it was a while ago? Just takes a little elbow grease time and just, uh, that's it. It's not too laborious. Even if it is, it's worth it. I think I'm going to mount this on a stand. Okay, time to do some buffing. Buff, buff, buff. I say buff. Yeah, I said buff. I'm feeling much better, guys. I think I'm starting to run on eight cylinders again. I'm following up my med medication. I'm taking my blood blood pressure all the time. As a matter of fact, it's probably about a half an hour run. I'm going to take about a five-minute break and take, and take my blood pressure. That's how it's doing. I'll never go rape for them things again. 
good Lord was on my side. I could have stroked out my dad back there. And everybody wondered, where's old Frankie Day at? I haven't seen him for a while. This damn thing can make a good companion next to the B-52. I've got one. I got a big old. I got a big buff. Yeah, I got a buff out there hanging in my darn bunk room back there. It was out here when I first moved in here, and I decided to take it out because I get tired of running into it all the time. It's too darn big. Keep view of the camera. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm so used to pulling things next to me. I gotta watch the monitor. But I got my monitor set pretty good. My camera. I always wonder why that dang thing turned around all the time. I kept on turning and stuff, you know. And I said, "Well, no wonder, Frank. This is how you. This is your monitor right here. All you do is adjust how you look at it, and you know where you're at. Keep everything in the frame of the camera. You can't go wrong. Big dummy." We're going to have mail call by tomorrow or the next day. I got some stuff coming in. Man, yeah, let's get nicer all the time, guys. I'll take that plastic off there, take that off. I'll be back normal. This is Webber's heck, guys, but it's worth it, you know what I mean? A lot of people just go ahead and use filler and stuff, but I like the sand. Save that filler. I don't want over sand, though, but though, like I say, this thing's not, it's not that bad. The fuselages don't overlap each other. Okay, I'm going to buff that puppy out. Up to us. Oh yes, yeah, we're getting there now. You know what's all done is when that seam disappears, fellas. When you can't see where you glue the fuselage together, you got it done. Once the weather clears up, but I'm clears up a little bit, I'm gonna be going doing some sailing. I'm gonna take my harbor tug out for a sail. I gotta keep up with that so I keep myself going. Got it. We spread a little bit of glue in there like I just did, but it does. It uh, it fills in the seams a little bit. When you dry, you go ahead and buff out, and all the residue it fills in the seam. And like I say, it's, it's like a filling agent. That to me, glue dries real fast too, it does.
Yeah, I may watch that movie tonight with Jimmy Stewart, The Strategic Air Command. That was a good movie. I think probably one of the best movies there was. The Technicolor used that movie is his breathtaking. So much clarity for a movie that's 60 years old. Light technique again. Let's see if that thing is filled in pretty good. Needs a little more help. We'll send that baby out now. We'll fill it in. Disappears on them. Yeah, always use a file board. Never use your fingers when you sand. The marks of your fingers leaves a mark of an amateur. A little more. You know, it's gone. I'm going to buff you out in a couple seconds. Yeah, so we're almost done here. We'll be, we'll be doing some sub assembly work in about a couple minutes. Oh, that's perfect now. Well, that's, not, that's out. That paint will fill that in like it's nothing. Smooth. We'll review this one with the camera. See how smooth it is? Can you see how it's put together? That buffing sand technique works out very well. Because I don't like that filler on there because I'm afraid it'll let me show through the putty, some, I mean the paint sometimes. Chubby, that's nice. Whoa, we're reading in the glare panel. Wonderful. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Okay. Get this buffing stuff out of the way. Yes, where was I? Yes. Come over here. Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead and glue these on next. The horizontal stabilizers. I knew I thought I'd buff them last night. I'll do it, make sure to do it again. Make sure it's done. Wonderful. Okay. Now we're going to go to the stabilizers then, guys. I'm going to follow the wing route.
Yeah, always look at the wing root, guys. It's wonderful. Oh, that's wonderful. Good fit, guys. As you can see, it's a wonderful fit. I'll tell you one thing, Hans Gall did a good job designing this kit, as old as it is. Okay. Go ahead and add some blue here. Man, that fits like a glove. Man, I think this is about the best kit I've built in a long time. And it's ancient too, just like me. My God, no, no seams, no, no joints. Man, I'm, ast I'm astounded. Right there, that's good. No, right there. You know, it's the fun thing about models. Some kits ask to be built and they go together very well. And some like to fight you. This is a very passive kit right here to build. Anybody get your hands on a 172nd scale Hasegawa B47's straddle jet, you'll find out it's a very relaxing kit to build and it goes together very well without fit issues. I mean, that's perfect, guys. I'm going to take. Check what the center is. Wonderful. My God, that's wonderful. Look, Mom, those things in sand. Wow. I'm amazed. Man, I tell you, this is an amazing kit. You know, I always did like the, the B-47 straddle jet. It's, it's something about it. It's a beautiful looking airplane. But I, I guess the Air Force didn't, didn't have no use for them. Back in those days, a lot of experimental stuff was going down. And I imagine that the, uh, the militaries at the time decided to say, hey, you know, the B-52 is all we need now. 
It's nice jet like I don't think we use none of those. Okay. Now let's get some southern assemblies going while that fuselage dries. Let's see if we can dig and get shaken with here. Yeah, okay, we'll start with the engine pods. That would be the outboard one. Not very many parts of this kit. If you're on this kit, you can have this thing done probably about two days. That includes all the paintwork and everything. Still do a decent job on it. Okay. This goes in the wing. Okay. Get rid of the sprue here. Pull that out of the way, we'll make a head break. Okay. Oh, I've got two more to go, do I? Cut this mess off. Man, what am I doing here? Oh, no wonder. Boy, these sprues are large sprues they gave you in here. Excuse me, guys, I mean a fuss like this.
get rid of this big old large sprue. I knew a guy one time used to save all these sprues. I mean, we do all these plastic sprues. We do with those things. Melt them down. It's exactly like I got special molds I can make stuff with. Melt this plastic down. He did too. He made them out of the old fashioned way by using sand and plaster. Melt that plastic down in a tin can to pour it in there. Cast some pretty good molds. Okay, where was I? Oh, yes. Okay, I've got all the fuel tanks here. Release from the sprues. Detached from the sprues. That dog in. Looks like I inherited the dog. I don't mind. I really don't not mind at all. She's a good. She's a good dog. Able Australian cattle dog. She's a good dog. She's very smart. I hear you out there. Give me a couple seconds. I'm going to finish sanding this pot here and take about a five minute break. I'll be back in a couple minutes, fellas. Give you guys a break too. You've been probably tired watching me sand, 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 but that's part of the build process. That's how freaking day goes. Wonderful. Take a little more of that out and be fine. Okay. I'll be back in a jiff. Hang loose. I'll take about a five minute break and let this dog in, get me a soda pop, and we'll continue. Back, guys, back. Okay, I got the fuel tanks here. I got them all sanded down, ready to be moved together. Now I'm gonna work on the fronts and backs of them. As you can see, not very many pieces, but they. But there's enough here and it's going to keep me busy for a long time. You know, another remarkable thing about this thing is, as old as it is, where's the flash? There isn't any. Same thing with Tamiya kits. Like at Lancaster they make. Grand Slam Bomber. Where's the flash? There isn't any. The precision built kits, guys. With precision made molds, don't leave much flash residue on there. Oh, 
Okay, I got these done. Now, the pod housing itself. Okay, whoa, we're gonna do some gluing here in a minute. It's labyrinth, but it's worth it, guys. It's worth it. All our models are worth it. To do a good job. Okay, one more to go. Heck of a lot, I was a kid back in the 1950s. I used to see these things fly all the time. They got a real scream sound to them. They're fast too. I think the B-47 is a lot faster than the B-52. Okay guys. All further ado, we're gonna go ahead and uh, for the nice video, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, get these components all glued together, and uh, that'll be it for the night. Cause I don't want this battery to go low on my camera right here. I'm watching that monitor quite, quite, uh, quite fluently as I build this thing. Even these things go together good. Man, he's fit like a charm. You know, really, guys, I'm serious. I'm really impressed with this kit. I really am. This thing's going together very nice. No fit issues at all. That's what amazes the hell out of me.
Ah. Капят солдинан. Yeah, these were Hasegawa kits were very popular back in the 1970s. I think they were the king of the roost of the Asian brother kits. And then something that come to view until the 1990s came in. And everything's Asian brothers. Yeah. Man, this thing's going to get a lot fuss. No mistake about it. Jeez. Okay. These go by here, don't they? Man, these things fit good. And, uh, we'll make sure. Like I say, you gotta clean all these parts real good. This kit don't need that much cleaning. Because you gotta kinda fiddle with it as you go along. Wow. It's like a glove. Cheese. Fit. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's a good kick, guys. It really truly is. Oh Lord, what a fit. Yeah, I think I'll give them a tube at a while and see if anybody built one of these things before. I got a feeling I'll be the only guy to do it who's built this thing. Oh Lord, no putty here at all. Boy, a good. A good buffin. Whew. Who needs filler? Okay. Now's the time for me to buff these things out. More sanding, Frank? You got it.
Always use the back of your number 11 blade. Right here, the back of it. Not the blade, the back of it. Stroke very gently. And it takes that seam out real good too. Then you go back and buff it out. Out of harm's way. This is all painted white, the fuel tank is. Boy, that makes it gone, it seems gone. See, repairing these parts and sub-assemblies makes it easier. Then all you do is glue it and paint. Well, that seems gone. Hey, Lord, that's gone, buddy. It's amazing how this stuff disappears. I don't think this gets... Is there any filler going to be? I haven't put those wings on yet. That's going to be the final test. scratches out. You can see it disappear on there. Well, that's smooth. Man. Yeah. I'm glad I had that sand out. Oh, well, but it's gone this time, though, that for sure.
Yeah. Yeah, it's probably gonna be a long video, fellas. I figure about an hour. I'm gonna pretty close that mark now and watch my camera see if I, see if I got a low battery or anything. So far, all green. I may have time to just finish up the other gas tank, fuel tank pod. Wonderful. Oh boy. One more to go, and that's it. This thing's fast. Yeah, it gives good scrape on number let back of number eleven blade. It really gets rid of all that that flash plastic on there. You get a good sand like I'm doing right here. Job done. Let's finish off with a good buff. Yeah, that's probably about modeling. It's all about modeling, guys. That's how you get your money's worth. You can do a lot of preparational work before you glue stuff down. Get your money's worth. Slap them together, man. Don't get them done that quick. They don't. Because I tell you, it shows you the mistakes you make, too. You ain't careful. There's a lot of people up there got a good trained eye. Okay, let's put this bad boy out. I'm gonna call it a vid. I'll go to switch over to the other camera and my video. What I'll do, when it's kind of painting time, I won't give it a white primer on the whole airplane. When the white primer dries, I'm going to go back over with a gloss coat of white paint. Let that dry about a couple of days. Come back, mask stuff down, start putting aluminum paint on there. That sure shine like a brand new penny. Yeah. 
Hey right, guys, I think I got this wrapped up for the night. I think I got a good hour video here. I'm really enjoying myself with this B-47. This thing's unprecedented now. I had no idea what I was doing. I was rumbling around my stash and I, I came across this old girl right here. So my God, Frank, I haven't built one of these before. I know you ain't too keen on jets, but this thing has some kind of significance. One thing good about this, no one's ever built one before. But I know. I'll soon find out when this thing's uploading. I'll check the tube out and see what's going on here. See if has anybody even built one of these before. I'm quite certain they have. I just haven't researched it out yet. Yeah. yeah these little buffers, they work very, very well. They prepare that plastic for painting. So like I say, with a good finish, you get a good paint job. Oh my God, that thing is... See how smooth it is? You can't even tell we put it together now. And you, you already watched you put it together. Okay. These pods here, to complete the engine assembly, I'll do off camera. Probably tonight, and I'll call it quits for the B-47. Tomorrow we'll get that uh, 80, that uh, SV-2C hill diver we'll get it going. I want to give a good day so it takes some outside pictures. I figured today would be a bad day to finish up real quick because of the weather. So I said, uh, what the hell, you know, let it dry overnight. And tomorrow you go ahead and do a little touch up here and there. And uh, you can go ahead and uh, find a reveal. Okay, we'll make a final deal with how much we did today in person. We get the fuselage all buffed out, as you can see. The seams all gone like Houdini. You need no fill at all on the stabilizers. And we set, we got all these fuel tanks all been buffed out, sanded down, and buffed out. Hey, it's a little sharp there. I must have missed that out a while ago. I got to buff this out. Then we'll go ahead and close the video. I said, Frank, how did you miss that? Old fumble thumbs. Nice. Yeah. We got our fuel tank pods all done. And we got our engines up, our outboard engine SLs all completed. All I gotta do is butt those out and assemble these on there. And uh, go from there. Okay, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, joining uh, joining in this live action video. You're probably tired of me sanding, but that's how Frankie Day rolls. You gotta sand and make sure your parts fit good. And they come out nice. About plus. And uh, so I figured, what the hell, you know, you guys get a kick out of this B 47 strategy. I know I am. Hell, it's inspired me to watch Jimmy Stewart movie tonight. Strategic Air Command. I'm going to watch that. I am. Okay. We're going to switch over to the other camera to finish up the video. Hang loose. We'll go to the other camera.